Hi, this is Roger Green, host of the Surfing the National Tsunami podcast. This week, we are celebrating our third birthday, which was on April 15th, along with our breaking the 150,000 download barrier a week earlier. Over this weekend, we are releasing five conversations from the main podcast recording session, in which Stephen Harrison, Jorn Schottenberg, Louise Campbell, and I recounted highlights from the last three years on the podcast and in the fatty liver community at large. These serve as companions to the three special conversations we released yesterday, each containing one of the interviews we conducted as part of this week's episode. This conversation starts with the team welcoming Stephen Harrison back to join our third birthday podcast. Stephen brings us up to date on his recent work, which focuses on some clinical trials, but more on, as he puts it, bridging the gap between ordinal pathology reads and non-invasive testing. After an opening round with York Schottenberg and Louise Campbell, as well as Stephen and me, we start by listening to my opening podcast message from season one, episode one, over three years ago. We discuss how far the podcast has come from that day. The entire conversation is chock full of digressions, personal stories about relationships between the individuals and the fatty liver community and laughs. It offers all of us, and I believe you, the listener, a chance to reflect on how your work, all of our work around, and knowledge of fatty liver diseases has grown stronger and deepened over time. Before we dive into this conversation, I want to thank the three sponsors of our celebration, Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, Novo Nordisk, and Inventiva Pharma, along with some of the patient advocacy organizations that have been supporters since we started the podcast, notably including the Global Liver Institute, Nash Knowledge, the Fatty Liver Foundation, and the Fatty Liver Alliance. Finally, I want to thank Louise Campbell, who joined me for all three interviews and has been with us since episode four of year one, and Stephen Harrison and Jorn Schottenberg, our two other lead surfers who've been along throughout this three-year journey. It wouldn't be an episode of Surfing Nash if on a day where we made lots of plans, lots of things went a little bit crazy. So we'll have Jorn with us in a few minutes. He's in Copenhagen trying to get back to his hotel right now. Um, We do have Stephen with us, and Stephen actually uh, showed up ahead of Jorn, which is not the typical pattern. But Stephen, great to see you. How have you been? Hey, Roger. I've been doing well. Good to good to be back for today. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what you've been up to recently? Because there's been plenty. Yeah. Stephen Harrison. Yeah. Still working hard to leave that big fat den on the planet in the name of fatty liver. So my work hasn't stopped. Kind of focused on really changing the way that we enroll NASH clinical trials by eliminating the pitfalls, roadblocks, hurdles, for drug development and doing that through work both at my Pinnacle site network as well as my Summit Clinical Research uh, Integrated Research Organization where we work very closely with big and small pharma to smooth out clinical trial enrollments, making it easier for studies to be enrolled, working on screen fail rates, and to that end, focusing diligently on efforts with AI digital pathology to bridge the gap between ordinal path reading and non-invasive testing reading. So I think in that vein, we've made a lot of progress and hopefully we can talk a little bit about that today. And then where we are with the non-invasive test and really focusing on three major platforms, Litmus, Goldmine, and Nail NIT, and how those three can work symbiotically with the Nimble platform to drive the paradigm forward on diagnosis, monitoring response to therapy, and predicting long-term outcomes using our non-invasive testing strategy, whether that's sequential testing like the guidance documents have, or simply finding a better test that could be used singularly to identify and monitor and predict response is where we want to go. So lots of work being done all across the board. As you know, we have lots of drugs showing promise in late phase two development and now in phase three. So continuing to drive that paradigm forward, working with our regulatory authorities to smooth out how we enroll these trials, what endpoints look like. And I guess that's enough to keep me busy for a day. Stephen, with all that going on, do you have any spare time? Do you have anything that's fun in your life right now? Uh, the fun in my life is watching my kids grow up. So, uh, so I'm currently in Dallas visiting my daughter at Southern Methodist University where she's completing her sophomore year. And then I, my son is in his senior year at Texas A&M. So he's finishing up there and just kind of trying to continue to be a dad to them and, and mentor them in their path towards greatness is something I treasure and enjoy doing. So that's my hobbies, if you will, or just kind of the free Free time I have focused on family, when I, where I have the time to do that. Okay, excellent, excellent. And good to have you with us and, and happy birthday, everybody. Louise, welcome back. Thank you. Last I caught up with you, you had a meter of snow in seven days and were in a remote enough part of British Columbia that you couldn't make a connection to come on the podcast last week. So you and 
I tried for about a half hour. Louise Campbell. Which is surprising, given it was Whistler. <laughs> And we're supposed to have good technology there. They did do the Olympic Games after all. But no, I survived in one piece. Enjoyed a wonderful family holiday. And that sounds strange, but my husband flew in from Perth, Australia. I flew in with two of the children from London. And the eldest child with his fiance flew in from London on the flight before we flew in on from London. So <laughs> get the coordination to get the entire family together from different locations in the world. And then we all flew out of Vancouver within hours of each other to three locations. Again. So everybody went back to it from whence they came, huh? Yes, they did. So it was great, but it was great for the first time in a couple of years and certainly pre-COVID to have gone back to Whistler to get some quality skiing in. But yeah, they've just closed Whistler Mountain after nearly a metre of snow in seven days. But it was wonderful. But I was struck by listening to the podcast last week and my vision of you in a rabbit suit for playing the Easter Bunny sort of struck me as something from um, one of the movies that Julia Roberts and Dolly Parton did <laughs> where there's an Easter Bunny in it. Steel Magnolias, that's it. Steel Magnolias, there you go, there you go. Brilliant film. If anybody's never seen it, watch it. I've seen, the, I've seen the play, not the movie. Yeah, what you just said about the movie, the quotes from the movie is very interesting to me. My daughter asked me about a quote and I am my favourite John Wick quote. If you haven't seen John Wick, you know, the fourth episode just came out. And to me, it's the best one of them all. But, you know, it's apropos for this conversation because I haven't been on the podcast in a while and, and I'm back today. And, and so if Roger were to ask me, you know, are you back? You know, would you say you're back? My answer would be in John Wick style. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> I'm thinking you are back. I think that's great. So if we're doing movie quotes for just a minute, uh, to give you one another second to get here, I did the, you know, every week Turns does this podcast club that they started doing during the pandemic with, with our podcast and still does them. Uh, they invited Jeff McIntyre and me to join them last week to talk about the episode we did on the ISA report. And for whatever reason, at the end of that episode, Diana Chung and Pam Danaher, and people on podcast don't know Diana, but you do know Pam. She's been on a couple of times. And I wound up talking about movie quotes. And Stephen, we wound up back at Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which I would think would be a favorite favorite of yours. That's a favorite. Yeah. Okay. Which quote did you use? Actually, I started with swim hell, the fall alone will probably kill you. And from there, I wound up on what what rules in a knife fight, which is actually maybe not my favorite quote, but certainly my favorite scene. My favorite quote might be what came after that, that nobody ever hears, which is Newman looking. I was just waiting for someone to count to three and Redford goes one, two, three, and he hits the guy with a two-handed back cross and knocks him flat on his back. So with that, happy third birthday. Jorn will be with us in a minute. I wanted to do a couple of things today. One of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to play some audio from uh, key moments in our history. And let me start here. Stephen, this is the beginning, literally the beginning. Hi, this is Roger Green, and welcome to the initial podcast of Surfing the Nash Tsunami, a podcast for people who are involved with drug development and commercialization in the lure disease space. We've developed this podcast because over the last month, we've heard tons of questions from virtually everybody involved in this community about the impact of COVID first, and then how that's going to affect the entire domino chain of upcoming market events, product readouts, clinical trials, launches, all that going forward. We have assembled a panel of four people, each of whom is probably the defined expert or one of the top two or three in one of the areas that is critical to this market. And the way this is going to work is that each week we will have a topic. One of the presenters will start by kicking the topic around and then folks will react and then we'll have discussion. That's the entire opener. As you listen to that, that doesn't sound at all like what we wound up doing, say, this week, does it? Well, it certainly has evolved, but mm -hmm. I would say it's evolved in a way to meet the needs of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first launched, we were the only conduit for information that could be broadly disseminated. We weren't going to meetings. Everybody was stovepiped and siloed in their own academic institution or their own business. And the dissemination brought broadly of data was lacking. That gave us the opportunity to start the podcast. And certainly it's been, I would say, a huge success in all the feedback that you've received, I've received, and others have received. And we've evolved, you know, to the point where we are today. And it's not by chance and it's not by coincidence. And it's through a lot of hard work and effort. Louise coming on board, Jorn coming on board, you working diligently to provide the content and all 
all the background that makes this happen. And I think the testament of time proves the podcast worth. And it's just something that's been fascinating to, to watch evolve over the past three years. It's been fun. And uh, we now have Jorn with us. Jorn? Jorn Schottenberg. Hi, everyone now. Uh, glad to see you and good to hear you. Uh, hi, Roger. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Louise. Hi, I'm Hey, Jorn. Jorn, it gave everybody a chance to catch up on what Stephen's been doing. And we were just starting to play the intro to the very first episode. We were just actually going with the, the very first thing that we did right at the beginning. I'm about to give you Stephen's initial intro. But Stephen, a couple of things. First of all, thanks for that. And yeah, this has been a labor of love by a lot of people, the people up front and also our engineer, Mike Wilson, who's been with us since about episode 15 and uh, Eric Rounds and Steve Vennon, who've been providing background in terms of social media and marketing from the beginning. And Jake Norman, our associate producer, who joined us a year ago. Stephen, one of the things I remembered when I listened to that is that we originally just planned for the four of us to keep rotating topics. And Peter wasn't worried because he figured we couldn't go for more than three months and then we'd be done anyway. And the other thing was that we talked about this being targeted at the drug development community. And it's really gotten a lot broader than that, you know, in terms of who listens right now. The growing listener base is increasingly treaters, transplant hepatologists, but also doctors in all different realms or, or, or allied professionals who are interested. And even Louise, the frequent nurse, because Louise's nursing episodes have actually wound up being, being among the bigger hits that we've had. And, and the liver nurse. I remember you, you poked a melon with a, what was it, to reproduce a liver biopsy? We poked a grapefruit with a biopsy needle. Stephen, I don't think you were on when we talked about this. Do you know the story? I thought it was urban legend. This but... is how Quentin and I got the first fiber scan at Imperial. We had no coronaries in the room of the 80-year-old lovely League of Friends, but Quentin was doing a wonderful presentation and I'd seen it before we went in. And I said, Quentin, we need something. He said, what do we need? I said, trust me, we need something. I said, I'll be back in a few minutes. So I came back with a grapefruit and he said, what are you going to do with that grapefruit? So he was doing his presentation and we were talking about liver biopsies, all the statistics, all the bits and pieces, massive boardroom, big table. The average age of the table was probably in the 60s because they hold the funds and they are wonderfully diligent in donating their time to these charities. They weren't quite sure what he was talking about. So I said, well, we take it from this and I ram this six inch needle through the grapefruit and you know a grapefruit crackles as it goes through the skin, just like it does through the skin. And everybody on the table went, <gasps> and we've changed it to that. We had the money for our fiber scan uh, in that second. The difference between something academic and something just practical. And the two married together for a perfect resolution. Imperial got its first of five fiber scans. That actually is one of the great stories of this podcast. A more serious story than Neil Henderson's called Lame Shorts or My Bunny Suit, but, but I think really compelling. And now back to Roger. We hope you've enjoyed this recording. Creating and fostering this podcast over the past three years and in the process getting to know the fatty liver community has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my professional life. We all want to express our deepest gratitude to the thousands of you who have downloaded our episodes and particularly those who have shared your stories or reactions with us over time. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this conversation or the entire episode, please put them in the review section of the page from which you downloaded this conversation or send an email to questions at surfingnash.com. Next week, we will be joined by French endocrinologist Cyril Kelsey for a fantastic discussion of the intersections between endocrinology and hepatology, looking at issues ranging from clinical research to care pathways. The Nash Tsunami team is really excited about this discussion. You should be as well. So until then, stay safe, surf on. We'll see you on the podcast. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.